Hello, I'm Avery or Hazel or Kylie. You can just pick one. I don't care. Hello, I am Lily. And welcome to the From the Closet podcast. Today, we are covering the fifth wave. Uh, so, obviously, this podcast will contain spoilers for said movie. I'm also, it's probably also going to contain spoilers for the book, because the plots are pretty much the same. Uh, so, if you However, would like... However, you, you know, one caveat. Yeah. Um, if you would like to avoid those spoilers, there will be a link in the description below to the Just Watch page for this movie, um, which itself will have links to every platform you can rent, purchase, or stream this movie on, with price comparisons for renting and purchasing. Uh, well, if you like to avoid the spoilers for the book, go to your uh, nearest bookstore. Yeah, like, uh, sorry, we can't fucking help you with that. <laughs> I mean, we could, I just don't want to. Wow. I'll, I, I, Avery being lazy. Yeah, I mean, it's work that I'm probably going to do eventually, because I may, I am very, very likely to cover this book on Off the Shelf, so. I mean, to be fair, I'm the person that's making the descriptions, though I just, I don't think there is a um, central place where uh, it tells you where to buy books. Is that I, I usually just link the Goodreads page, um, mm -hmm. and the Goodreads page will usually have a link on a to Amazon or somewhere else where you can purchase a book. I see, I see. Yeah. At least I think that's what I do. <laughs> you think? It's what you do. I mean, I've only, like, actually fully released one episode of Off the Shelf, and then there's another on Patreon. So... Yeah, um... Huh. But yeah, um... Speaking of which, yeah, uh, down in the description you'll find a link to our Patreon where you can vote on future episodes of this show, as well as get access to episodes before they release, and early access to episodes of our sister show, Off the Shelf. Which, if you haven't well, guessed like by now... it's like we were now, just talking about that. Yeah, and if you haven't guessed by now, Off the Shelf is a podcast about books. And it is exclusive to YouTube and Patreon. Also in the description, you will find a link to Anchor.fm, which is now Spotify for Podcasters. And that page will have links to every platform that they, this podcast is on. God, I could not words right there. Um, Word hard. Yeah, words, it, wordsing is hard. <laughs> uh, but uh, the Spotify for Podcasters link will also have links to our Instagram and Twitter, where you can be notified when we release new episodes. Um, Lily, can you spin the wheel to determine what we're covering tomorrow? Yes, I can. Are you sure? Well, it's spinning right now. <laughs> what, do you, what do you want from me? <laughs> uh... A sandwich. No, but you get Blade Runner. Okay, um, that's interesting. I for I legit forgot Blade Runner was on the wheel. I wish to forget that Blade Runner was a thing. I can't imagine but it's anyway. that. I can't imagine it's that bad. I mean, it's pretty universally praised, so. It's just I had to watch it for a school assignment. Speaking of, if I can pull some strings, I might. Now, I'm not making any promises, but I could have a guest um, appear who also seen the movie um, in school. He never had the same class, but he was, like, right after mine. All right. I mean, I'd be down for that. Like, it would be our first guest on the show, and I've wanted to have guests on this show for a long time. Yeah, um, episode... Yeah, we're absolutely uh, past episode 50, so... No, sorry, 150. Yeah. Yeah, we are well past 150, I think. I think I, think I recently saw we released 154... Um, and by the time this is out, it's going to be a lot further. No, um, we recently released, let me see, last one, 148. 
And uh, either way, we're going to be well past 150 by the time this episode comes out. Yeah. But anyway, um, please get out if you'd like to avoid spoilers, because we are now going to begin talking about the movie. All right. So, um, I have one question. Sure. So when you, okay, actually, I guess to uh, answer this question, I need to ask another question. Did you watch the? Did you watch this first, or did you read the book first? First, or have you ever read the book? I read the book long before it was even announced that there would be a movie adaptation. Okay, so you probably can't answer the question well. But I'm just going to ask anyway. Did you see the um, the plot? Was it even supposed to be a plot twist that um, the fifth wave were the aliens trying to um, get the kids to kill everyone? I didn't see that coming, no. And it I was just, awesome. I it, didn't get, like, all of that. But, like... I just totally saw that the um, army was uh, the aliens. Yeah. Um, uh, so before we like really dive in too deep with this movie, hmm. I want to talk about how it's it's by sheer complete luck that we were able to cover this movie in the first place. So. I saw this movie uh, had been announced, um, and unfortunately, I was not able to see it in theaters. Um, and it didn't come out on streaming services when the movie like finally became available for like home viewing. And I was like, mm, "God damn it! I want to watch this fucking movie." <laughs> um, so eventually, I ended up buying the Blu-ray. And it was just a Blu-ray. There was no DVD in there in, at all. Um, and earlier today, when I watched this movie uh, on YouTube through, like, Movies Anywhere and shit, uh, I went and checked my Blu-ray copy, and there is nowhere on that box that it says a digital code was inside. But there for sure was a digital code inside. I'm not even sure if it was supposed to be there. Huh. Wait, really? Yeah. I've bought movies before that were supposed to have digital codes and didn't. So, it wouldn't surprise me too much if a movie wasn't supposed to have a digital code in it, and did anyway. And you got just a Blu-ray copy. Yeah. Huh. And I know, you know, you got a digital code, because that's how we fucking watched it. Yeah, like, we were sh like, we're sharing, like, my Voodoo and her Movies Anywhere account, um, and, and the Movies Anywhere just branches off to other things. Y yeah, so, like, for me, I watch- iTunes. Watched I watched it on, like, YouTube, uh, cause we have her Movies Anywhere account connected to my, my Google account, um, which allows me to watch this movie on YouTube because I own it on Vudu. Allows you to watch a lot of other movies, like Puss in Boots. Yeah. I might rewatch that. But, um, I saw this movie, like, maybe once or twice. Uh, when I bought it, and then I didn't watch it again uh, until today. And I hmm. forgot just how weird of an adaptation this is. So, I'm going to start off by saying the book is amazing. And it does have very much the same story. But the thing that makes the book so much better than the movie is the characters. Hmm. The characters are very charming their relationships with each other are very fun to read and they're also just really fucking funny and yeah, if i'll be honest i was more invested into what was happening than the characters yeah but like i get that 
But for me, like, not being able to be invested in the characters took me out of what was happening. Like, I just... I see. Like, you get the reveal that Evan is a, uh, is an other, and I just don't care. Oh, and yeah, no. I'm just like, well, okay, then. Yeah, and you get the reveal that, like, the kids are the fifth wave, and I just don't care. I called it, though. And it's like, I don't know, it, it feels really weird. Like, Cassie is... Okay, the movie very quickly... Uh, okay, the movie technically opens with Cassie going into a gas station and killing a guy with a crucifix. Um, which is actually a scene that's ripped straight out of the book. Huh. Um... It, it's a vi I, I felt like that scene was very, very well done. That might be my favorite scene in the entire movie. Um, I have a question about the book. Sorry for cutting you off, but was the book, um, like, how was it told? I think it was told in first person, but it shifted back and forth between Cassie's point of view and Ben's point of view. Was it like, you know, the person wrote the book, or just, um, you just know what they're thinking? I think, it, like, it, it was first person, so, like, you, you get to know their thoughts. Okay, yeah. Um, anyway, I just wanted to know. Uh, at least, that's how I think it was. I could be wrong. I read these books in fucking high school. Um, and yeah, I say <laughs> books, because it's a trilogy. And something interesting. The movie to... definitely ended on a uh, not a cliffhanger, but definitely not a completed note. Yeah. Um. Something to point out, though. Um. This movie came out before the last book came out. Hmm. <laughs> so there was that. Interesting. Yeah. Um. And I definitely. Uh, I definitely agree with a the general consensus that the first book is the best one and the last two books are nowhere near as good. But they are still good. They're a satisfying conclusion somewhat. But Oh, so it's how I feel about The Giver. I honestly thought The Giver was just one book. It's four. What the hell? I actually have a book... With all four books inside of it. Like, uh, just, like, not um, a collection, but it's just one book. Interesting. I know there are books like that for other series out there. I know for sure there's one for the Chronicles of Narnia, and I fucking hate that book. Oh! Yeah, because the, the order of the books in that big volume is mm. wrong. And yeah. it's all because of uh, it's all because of the publishing company who has the rights to that series. They have fucked up the the order on like copies of that the, that series so badly. They're no longer like it, it. It hell, it's it's so bad to the point where like if you go buy, buy physical copies of these books, they are numbered in chronological order. Instead of release order. And you are not supposed to read those books in chronological order. You're not supposed to do anything in chronological order. Like, it was your first time. Yeah. Um, so, I hate, I hate what the, the publishing company has done to the Chronicles of Narnia. But that's a conversation for another day. Uh, the fifth wave, though. The problem with this adaptation is the characters are not the way they should be. So, shortly after the first scene in the movie, which is what I was talking about earlier, we go to a scene where Cassie is at, like, a high school party. No! The Cassie was not the type of person to be at high school parties on her Saturday evenings or whatever. She certainly wasn't, like, confident enough to approach Ben Parrish, uh, like how she did in the movie. The whole nice phone case was just... 
weirdly inserted into this movie that that wasn't a thing from the book and it didn't come back for like a joke later like i felt like it would have been warranted if ben was like oh you're the girl with the polka dot phone case but no like they didn't do anything with that it was just something random and hmm. ben is just generic boy that's that's all he is in this movie. Whereas, like, in the book, he's mostly characterized through, like, his relationship with Sam and how he kind of takes on a big brother role to Sam um, when they're at the uh, army base or whatever. Um, and that's just completely left out of the movie. Like, yeah, they have conversations, but it didn't really feel like a brotherly relationship uh like it did in the book and then i see you have evan walker oh my god okay so first of all the twist where he is a um the twist where it's revealed that evan walker is another is handled so much better in the book for starters he never like for starters he's not lying to her she doesn't find him in a lie he literally chooses to tell her about it of his own accord and in a very interesting way because like he actually gives her the like some weird ability to like see into his mind it's it's something weird going on where she actually is able to see into his mind and he lets her into his mind and she finds out. Um, okay, that's just weird. It's weird, but it was really much better handled than having it be a lie and them stumbling across some dude who exposes it. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. They also developed a romantic relationship before she even left the house. Um, there's also just the fact that for a for at least a few... Like, they were in the house for a lot longer while she healed up. Um, in the book. Uh, but there's also, like, a point to be had where, like, in the book, for quite a few days, she thought he was a creep. Because, like, for one, he had to, like, just blatantly, he had to take her pants off in order to uh, cover up that wound. And then, like, also, there's, like there's a scene where she goes to take a bath and he's like sitting outside of the bathroom. But like, it was like, you, you're reading it and you know, obviously he's there in case she like gets hurt or can't get up or something like that. But she's sitting here thinking, is this guy a creep? What, what the fuck is going on? Um, and then eventually like, she comes around to trusting him. But in the movie, it's just weird. And then they throw in this fucking scene where she sees him bathing in a river. And I'm like, was this just put here for the teenage girls? Is that the only reason this scene's in the movie? No, it's put there for the obligation to have um, your actor shirtless. Yeah, for the teenage girls. I swear it's like an obligation to Hollywood at this point. Yeah, I don't know. It it feels really fucking weird. Um, they also left out the memory machine, uh, which is actually a pretty important plot device. Um, so basically, when the people go into this like camp, uh, Wright Patterson or whatever, the aliens mm. they have a machine that is able to allow them to view people's memories. And that was one of the things, like, that was literally the reason that Cassie started attacking that female sergeant character and killed her, because she couldn't have, um, she couldn't have the aliens, like, knowing her memories, because then they would just kill her. And... It was also a concern. It was also the reason Ben ends up running 
from like the commander dude because the commander had said that he was going to put Ben back through that machine so that he could see Ben's memories of the mission that happened. Hmm. So it, it was a weird choice to leave that out, but I, I don't know, whatever. And also uh, just another thing too about the characterization and relationships. Uh, there's this really awkward moment where like Evan shows up in the base and then, like, Cassie just makes out with him in front of Ben. And that, I, I, I could be wrong, but I don't think that was in the book. <laughs> I mean, yeah, of course, we, we gotta get, you know, that make-out scene. We gotta have a weird love triangle moment that wasn't there. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it, this is, uh... Obviously, there's a reason I'm not commenting a lot, because I never read the book, so I'm just absorbing all this information. Yeah, I just want to talk about these uh, uh, the, the stuff here, because like, I think it's important to understand why I'm probably going to be rating this movie lower than Lily is, um, just as someone who's read the book. Uh, one other character I want to point out is Ringer. Uh, Ringer is supposed to be a badass, not an emo teen. I will be honest, like, obviously, you know, the characters will be worse for you because they're supposed to be different. You know they're supposed to be different. Yeah. Even still, I'm still like, I just don't care a lot about these characters. I can, they're definitely, were not that um, well written in this movie. No, they they for sure weren't. Um, honestly, Even I can tell that. Like honestly, I'm really disappointed with the, especially with the scene where Ben and Ringer realize that they are the fifth wave because that was such a huge moment in the book, and like watching the characters come to that realization was like a whole big thing, and in the movie. Ben just, like, figures it out all in an instant and then, like, has a whole monologue about, like, monologue about it, and that's it. <laughs> and I'm like... Hey, it's like me. I'm like, oh, uh, okay. Uh, you could have done that a lot better. I mean, I'll be honest. That whole, um... Oh my god, we're the fifth way. We're being controlled by, um... You know, the people that are trying to make us into armies. I just saw that right when they um, showed the cars that were actually working. Well, see, that's the th that's another thing. The movie leaves out um, like an out that the humans have for believing it because um, there's like a couple of lines talking about how they managed to get the power back on at a military base. But they should have explained that more in the movie, and they didn't. Um, and yeah, also, that just got me immediately suspicious about, um, you know, I bet that the aliens could, you know, easily just have working cars. Yeah, and, you know, just another thing, too, that is a problem with both the book and the movie. An EMP mm. like that would not be able to kill for starters it would not be able to kill all electricity on the planet there are there are things that are just going to be in places that are like proofed against electromagnetic pulses but then also there's the issue of a lot of older vehicles would still be able to run because they don't have any electrical components at all i mean also you only see, like, one, um, ship, right? Yeah. So, I... to do an EMP around the entire world, it's just impossible. Yeah, it, 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 well, scientifically speaking, with the technology we have, it's impossible. Theoretically, they have better technology and can send out an EMP that encompasses the entire planet. 
sure, I can I can get past that. It's just the fact that there are things that like there are literally things that block electromagnetic pulses. And that's never addressed in the books. Um, and then there are vehicles that don't rely on any electrical components at all that should still be working, and that's also never addressed in the books. Also, are there more waves in the other books? No, I don't think so. Hmm. I, I Granted, I have only read the other two books once, but I do not believe there were other waves beyond that. I think, um, I think the fifth wave just kind of kept going, and the book was like about like Ben and Cassie and their whole crew trying to stop it. And then eventually like Evan shows up again. And that's another thing too. Um, they something they left out of the movie was Cassie thinking Evan is dead. Uh, not sure why they left that out, but uh, at the end of the book, Cassie believes Evan is dead. The reader is left unsure. I see. I mean, I guess they didn't plan on doing the second or third book. I was, like, I, I get the feeling that they were planning on doing a, a second or third movie, but they just, this movie didn't do well. <laughs> I mean, I was, I mean, they left it open-ended because I mean, that's how the book did. Why are you supposed to give it another ending? I mean, I've seen movies that like would adapt one book in a series and change the ending so that they didn't have to adapt more. Beautiful creatures seem okay, to do I that. Think... Yeah, I was about to ask you for an example. I mean, I knew they probably existed, but yeah, yeah, you're right. But yeah, I don't know. Um. You want to talk about things that you liked about this movie? Honestly, it's really just the premise. Then and I would, obviously, like, if... Hmm. I, I, I was going to say, then I would highly recommend reading the book. Uh, there's a lot of things about it, like, um... You know, these aliens are coming down, um... A post-apocalyptic world, and you know who can, tr like, who can you really trust? Yeah, I, I think it's a uh, really cool the i the whole idea that they are like trying to kill off humanity but preserve the planet is a pretty good um like it, it's a pretty good way to like I don't know it's a pretty interesting thing. Um, yeah, it's an um, interesting way to um, go around this alien species trying to take over. And I also, like, appreciate some of the lines talking about, like, humans wouldn't wipe out an entire species just because they're occupying a space we want to be. And, like, the alien responds, why not? You've been doing it for centuries. That is true. Yeah, like, Jesus, like, that one cuts deep. But the aliens are doing it to us, and it's not it's not good when it's happening to us. It doesn't feel right. Yeah. <laughs> we can do it to other people, sure, but to us? No, no, that's just too far. But yeah, I don't know. Well, like, the, the so whole the idea of, like, killing was... off people in waves was interesting like the first wave is like setting off the emp and it kills off like anyone who's on life support a lot of people who are in vehicles at the moment um anyone who's in an airplane um or a helicopter or something like that uh you're all fucking dead <laughs> and then they do the natural disasters yeah like the next thing is like causing Causing just a shit ton of tsunamis fucking everywhere. Um, and so, like, every coastal city, fucking destroyed. Every island, fucking everyone's dead. See, you know what's the sad part about this? What? If this movie happened in real life, I'd be dead right now. Yeah. 
Um, see, that's the thing about this kind of story. Um, it's not just, like, it's not a question of, are you skilled enough to survive? There's a lot of luck involved. Because if you, if you happened to be in a car, you may very well have ended up dead in the first wave. Uh, if you lived in a coastal city or on an island, you may very well have died in the second wave. And then, even if you made it through the first two waves, you may very well have died in the third wave. Because the third wave was a fucking virus. Though, I mean, where I live, there's um, a lot of mountains as well. So, it, obviously, you can never prepare for it. But if you did, just go to the mountains. You'd be safe. Maybe. I mean... Like, Cassie and Sam only survived because they only had the Great Lake to worry about. Um, and then they just got lucky to at, never never get the virus. Pretty damn yeah, lucky, too, because their mother was a healthcare worker. <laughs> yeah, I live an hour away from the ocean. I live... You think I'd survive? No. I think you would get the avian <laughs> flu and die. So wait, you think I'd survive, uh, you know, being drowned, but you think I would not survive the flu? No, like, I think you would, like, be out of range, probably, for, like, the coastal destruction. Hmm. But I definitely think the flu would get you. And if it didn't, you would wide. probably go... <laughs> If it didn't, you would probably go to one of the survival camps and die there instead. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I don't know. Like, this movie, it it could have been better, and I'm disappointed it wasn't. The book is fucking great. As a movie, it's fairly okay. As an adaptation, it's fairly okay. The problems with the adaptation are just the characters. The story beats, for the most part, are accurate. Though, it just leaves like a hollow shell instead. Yeah. Like, what actually happens in the story is good. But the people who are actually, you know, affecting the story... You don't care that much. Yeah. And uh, it's just right, disappointing. For, uh, critic ratings? Yeah, I guess. Let, let's talk about what the critics thought. This movie is mediocre. But holy shit, what the hell, Ron Tomatoes? So IMDb, IMDb gives it a 2 point... What? No, 5.2 out of 10. Raw Tomatoes gives it a 17%, and 63% of Google users like this movie. Damn, I actually didn't expect the Google user score to be that low. But then I again, bet that's probably why you're giving it. Yeah, um, I'm giving this a 6.2. I just love I I know what you meant by it, but I love... He's say I can't believe the um, Google users are just so low. Rate it lower. <laughs> um, I do want to do a little bit higher than you, but unlike what you said at the beginning of the movie, I'm it's not gonna be drastic. Six point eight. All right. Well, you can join us tomorrow for Blade Runner. Um, but beyond that, uh, I've been Avery, that's been Lily, and we will be seeing you.